Today we, we celebrate the feast of St. Joseph the Worker and our liturgy will be that of St. Joseph the Worker but it will also double as our Sunday liturgy. And today we are reminded and invited to continue to join the Lord in His creative love, in His creative work of love as our world is not yet complete as we are not yet complete. And the Lord invites us to complete His work. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to His native place and taught the people in their synagogue. They were astonished and said, Where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Are not his sisters all with us? Where did, where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and in his own house. And he did not work many mighty deeds there, because of their lack of faith. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Charlotte Chandler is a writer noted for her revealing books about famous, very famous personalities. And one of her books she entitled The Ultimate Seduction. It is about the attitudes of famous people towards work. And for people who have read the book, often one of two key points stick in their minds. First, that many famous people worked very hard. And second, their motivation for working was not money. The title of the book was actually inspired by what the famous painter Pablo Picasso told Chandler in his interview. He said that the ultimate sedu seduction or allurement was creative labor. All of the famous people who were interviewed for this book say that they found their ultimate seduction or their ultimate, the last attraction in their work. They told her how they achieved success doing what they loved to do and what it was like when they actually achieved success. And more often than not, their motivation was to make a dream come true or to make the world a better place to live in. And this is actually, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, the point of the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker that we celebrate today. When Pope Pius XII instituted the feast in 1955, it was in response to the May Day celebration for workers usually sponsored by the communists in communist countries. Back then, May 1 or May Day was the day of the worker in communist lands, a day of rest, of triumphant militaristic parades, and of pride in all that communism had accomplished, supposedly for the proletariat or the common man. But there is more to labor than merely making a living. We have to make a life. And the church, in an effort to help us remember this, instituted the parallel celebration of Saint Joseph the Worker. And what is that more? And what is that more that the church wants us to remember? Perhaps these two things. First, that Jesus was a carpenter, obviously trained by his father to accept both the satisfactions and the difficulties of the vocation of, the, of, of, of a carpenter, the labor of a carpenter, no matter how ordinary it is. And second, 
that humanity is constantly invited to be like God, not only in, in thinking and in loving, but also in creating. That ultimately, whatever we do ought to contribute to the building of God's kingdom here on earth and the strengthening of the body of Christ. Let us first take the first point. When Pope Pius XII instituted the feast, of, he proposed St. Joseph as a true icon of human labor in contrast to the rough factory workers in the communist lands. St. Joseph did not have his fist raised in anger at the capitalist oppressors of Nazareth. He was not leading an angry mob to burn down the house of their boss. Rather, St. Joseph worked like a normal person, an, like an ordinary person worked. He was quiet about it. He did his duty and he did it with great devotion. He provided for his family, he provided his family with food and with shelter. And he did not see himself as a victim of injustice. In fact, most likely, he made excellent furniture and he received a fair wage for his work. What does this silent and devoted labor rendered by St. Joseph reveal to us, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ? This brings us to our second point. The second point is this. Work from a Catholic perspective is a source of dignity. Doon nanggagaling ang ating dignidad sa ating gawa. It, it has to be done. They say a life of pure leisure is not a life at all. Kung pas, pa, 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 kung papatulog-tulog lang tayo, paupo-upo lang tayo, that is not the life. Work and want and need and trials and challenges are required to produce a mature person, a responsible adult. Sabi nga nila, no pain, no gain. No work, hindi no work, no pay. No work, no mature adult. A mature adult is produced because of work. We need to recover the real meaning of work, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ. Even if work is difficult, often backbreaking, it need not be seen as a punishment. Hindi parusa ang ating trabaho kahit mahirap. As the creation story points out, even God the Father labored to create this world. And he found all the work to be worth it because everything he saw, that because he was able to see that everything he created was good. In today's first reading, we are told that God created man and woman in his image and blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Oftentimes, we interpret this commandment of God as we ought to give birth and fill the earth with many, many humans. The more, the better, so we can fill the earth with human beings who will conquer the world. But maybe... Just maybe that is not what the Lord meant. Maybe the Lord may be asking us to live fertile and fruitful lives by multiplying not ourselves, but the good that we are capable of doing. Perhaps He asks us to conquer this world not by lording it over the rest of creation, but by filling it with the goodness that we are capable of producing. Today's feast, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, therefore reminds us that when we work, we participate in the continuing and loving work of creation of the Lord. We are also told that at the end of the sixth day, God looked at everything He had made and He found it very good. And so, he rested on the seventh day from all the creative work he had done. But come to think of it, why did the Lord rest? Was it because the work has been completed? Perhaps not, because creation continues and the Lord shares his creative work with us. 
perhaps he rested on the seventh day because he was confident that goodness can come out of us, that like him, every fruit of our creative labor can be good. Tayo na ang bahala, pwede na siyang magpahinga. In all this, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, today's celebration reminds us that God's work of creation was a work of love and that He continues to labor to make each one of us better and make this world a better place to live in. And most importantly, we are invited to continue His labor of love and may it be our ultimate seduction. Amen. Before I give a final blessing, as usual, I would like to leave with you a thought that you can bring for this week as we continue our Easter celebration. Charlotte Chandler, the author that I mentioned earlier, says that what is remarkable about the people she interviewed is that their work revolved, the motivation behind their work is they wanted to make a dream come true and they wanted to make the world a better place to live in. In fact, she says that the work, the work of these people have grown out of a vision that they felt compelled to share with the world. So maybe it would be good for us to ask ourselves, what do we want to share to this world? Because what you can share with this world, the goodness that you can bring to this world, is the vocation that the Lord wants to give to you. And if you want to be, if you want to be devoted to your vocation, you need to answer this question. What is it that the Lord compels you to share with this world?